for you. Um, so, uh, I, just to sort of circle back, because you started talking about the first clear. Um, Ronald Howes. What was his name again? Ronald B. Howes, H-O-W-S. Howes, correct. And you wrote up about that. But, yeah. Um, what was your impression, some impressions at that time? You, you're talking about how Dianetics hadn't demonstrated any clear. Yeah. Uh, so was, was there a lot of, was Hubbard really have a lot of attention on, you know, bringing well, somebody out that he could point to or? Yeah, that was my impression throughout the, the, there was a lot of enthusiasm at the beginning, primarily because of Campbell's influence. And, um, you know, Hubbard had, had done such a magnificent job of selling the characteristics of a clear that it didn't matter who you cleared, you couldn't prove it. I mean, it was... Uh, right. Uh, actually, I don't know if you remember the name Vija Ray. You ever see that anyway? Uh-uh. One of Hubbard's uh, students had supposedly produced a clear by the name of Visa Ray in Los Angeles, California. And they were, they put her on the stage before a whole bunch of people to uh, demonstrate that this could be done. And she broke off in tears. Uh, and that uh, discredited the whole thing pretty badly. There was a famous event like similar to that. I don't know if it's the same one at the Shrine Auditorium. Is that the one that you're talking I don't, about? I wasn't there. I don't remember where it was. Okay. I used to know the name of the guy, the the fellow that did it. I used to know him, but I don't remember. He went on over to, he went on, followed Hubbard over to England, and uh, I understand eventually uh, England booted him out because he was having a relationship with with the young, uh, a woman that was too young for the English uh, society. That may have been Visa Ray. I don't know. Mm. Uh, Okay. Can't remember his name either. Come back to me one of these days. Now, Howe was in the Wichita time period. Uh, was that yeah, Howe's Howe's was in Minneapolis when I left Hubbard. I had uh, an offer to go to back to Mobile, Alabama, and work with my group there that I had set up, or Fairview, the group in Fairview. There was uh, one of the instructors at Lisbon, New Jersey, and I set up a, a group in Fairview, actually a corporation. And uh, I'd also set up another one in Mobile, and I'd had a, uh, an offer to go back there and work with them. And uh, I also had an offer from Minneapolis from a young a lady by the name of Seda Field. She changed her name later on to Loomis, L-O-O-M-I-S, for some reason, I don't know why, but Seda Field uh, was active in the in the Minneapolis group, and she invited me up there to try to help the group out. So I went up there, and uh, uh, I was almost immediately introduced to this fellow by the name of Ronald Howes, who at that time was in the hospital having a... I, I, not sure, I think it was a kidney stone operation, I'm not sure which. But uh, he came over to the Elizabeth, New Jersey uh, Center, which was right close to uh, University of Minnesota. And uh, I worked with him there. And when I worked with him, I just threw out everything I'd learned in Elizabeth, New Jersey, and tried to apply the principles that I figured I'd gotten from Hubbard, or out of Hubbard, from being around him. Uh -huh. And uh, some of the phenomena that came out was absolutely amazing. It was like, uh, at one time uh, I asked him to uh, rebalance all of his control centers. I don't even know what a control center was in those days, but that's what I asked him to do. And uh, he was lying down, this left side of his body just vibrated like mad. Well, it, he was the kind of guy that could do anything you asked him to do, you know. Apparently he was high enough tone that he'd just say, do this, and he could do it. Uh -huh. So I said, to rebalance your control centers, and he did that. And man, he came out with attributes that were unbelievable. 
So after about the second or third uh, uh, audit session, I brought them out before the group and I insisted that everything be taped. That's how it got to be taped. And, uh, and the people that he'd been around with for years and helped uh, develop the, the group for the Dianetic Center, they, they were all knew him personally and were closely related to him, but there wasn't one there that was not convinced that he, he wasn't clear. Uh, that he was not clear? Pardon me? They were convinced that he was not clear? No, that he was. Oh. They were not convinced. Uh, how, how should I? Wow. Well, <laughs> yeah. You got it right. Anyway, uh, he was also very well uh, scientifically trained, well educated, but he had this phenomenal ability to do whatever he asked him to do. And it wasn't a pretense that he would really do it. And. Uh, the characteristics he came out with, I've described in that publication. But most of those characteristics are what now Hubbard calls the theta range. Oh, sure. Yeah. But at that time, we only had clear. We didn't have any grids. It was either clear or not clear. Right. So uh, <coughs> I got on the phone, got a hold of Hubbard. I described some of the things that we now observed. And there was this long pause. I should say at the beginning, I probably you probably read this, and it's probably old to you now. But one time I was standing in his uh, in his dining room, and he was gazing out. And he says uh, something real good is going to happen to Dianetics in February. Because remember, it was all going down. Mm. I said, "What is it?" And he says, "I don't know." He says, "I just know it's going to happen." So I got a hold of Hubbard on the phone when I was up in Minneapolis and I described all these characteristics and there was a long pause and he says, so Perry, it was you, he, referring back to something good was going to happen. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I was so excited about it all that, and so positive about it all that I felt that, that everybody ought to know about it. And these other people in the group, they were all sort of apathetic. They, well, that's nice. He's a good friend of ours. Look what he's done. And <laughs> oh, I wow. thought, gee, everybody ought to experience this or know about it. So I got on the phone and started calling some groups. I called Phoenix, Arizona, and California, and so on, described what had happened. So they paid my way out. I didn't have any money, so they paid my way out. And that's when I met a number of people in Phoenix. And and uh, that's when I was invited to lecture at A.E. Van Vogt's place. All told, I went to Vancouver, Canada, Norwalk, Connecticut, um, you know, Phoenix, Arizona, Los Angeles, and I don't know, may have been a few other places. But my main message was, it is possible that a clear, a per clear is possible. And these are some of the broad principles that are that are involved. I didn't I didn't try to to give them any lecture on auditing, you know, just although that's what they wanted, I'm sure. Yeah. Did you actually audit when you did this tour around? Did you audit other people? I audited a handful of them, but mainly I just gave out a lecture. I was there to tell them it was possible, you know. Mm -hmm. My eye is running. So uh that sort of stirred up the neighborhood again. Uh, I sort of bowed out of the picture and Ron Howe sort of took it over. And he, his, he moved to Colorado Springs, Colorado. And uh, he had, I, I went to visit there a time or two, but he had just absolutely dozens of people coming from all over the United States and he'd work with them. He worked with them. He worked at engineering, electrical engineering during the day, and he worked with them at night. So he was an auditor himself? Yeah, well, he never got trained, but he, he did what he now knew what to do. Okay. And uh, he had read the book, of course, and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, he just had one person after another coming in late at night, work and work and work with him. And they'd go home, and they'd tell other people, and they'd come back. So he sort of became a mecca during that period.
somewhat of a celebrity in the Dianetics yeah. world. Hubbard, Hubbard never acknowledged him, really. Oh, really? That was one of the characteristics of Hubbard. Everything was Hubbard's. Nobody else had invented anything. Um, yeah. Except Aristotle and Krasinski and and Will Durant. Maybe and, Newton. And all those were taken off <laughs> later on. <laughs> uh, well, others have said the same thing, that he was pretty... Uh, pardon you know, me? Others have said the same thing that knew him, that he, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, want to take the credit himself rather than, uh, yeah. you know, give credit Extremely to huge ego. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Extremely huge. Anyway, uh, that went on for quite a while. I, I was in, I went to visit Ben, I think, in California, and I met this fellow, Lynn Sterling, that I told you about, the homosexual. And uh, I did a little auditing of him, and I, I got an idea. I said, I said Lynn, uh, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I want you to give me your first answer. Okay, I says, uh, where is Ron Howes now? Neither one of us had any communication with Ron Howes. He didn't even know who Ron was. He says, I get the impression that, that uh, now remember, Ron was in Minneapolis at this time, or St. Paul. He says, I get the impression uh, of a line just a little bit below Denver. Wow. And then when I got back, I found out Ron had moved to Colorado Springs. Wow. So this this was very fundamentally interesting to me that somebody who didn't even know who the guy was, I could ask a question and, and there was a correct answer. Yeah. I had had a lot of little experiences like that and uh, being trained as a, as a mathematician and a, uh, minors in chemistry, physics and psychology, I just wasn't oriented that way. It took me a long time to break out to, to see this other side. And I, it was only because of the experiences I had as I went through all of those things. <clears throat> yeah. That uh, type of paranormal uh, activity is a lot more uh, sort of acceptable today than yeah. Uh, yeah. 60 years ago. <laughs> I remember walking up Van Steps at 71, 75 and a half. Sunset Boulevard, they go from here all the way up. This woman coming down was a friend of Van's and she was some sort of fortune teller. And she stopped me and she says, you've had operations right here and here and here, haven't you? And I says, how did you know? She says, I can feel. See, that was a big experience to me. Wow. And it was later on in auditing, you know, hundreds of hours of people that I got so I could feel the same thing. What they had. Rather interesting. Yeah.